A lot of people have been asking Glorious for a number of years now to develop and release a numpad to complement the Gym MK Pro. Well today, that wish is coming true. The Glorious numpad is a solid product that has a lot of features bundled together, not found anywhere else, but there are some nuances that you need to know about, so let's talk about it. First off, we need to rip off the band-aid. Coming in at essentially 130 US dollars, the Glorious Numpad is expensive, but there are unique features that justify the price if you plan on taking advantage of them all. In the Numpad micro pad segment that's shipping in volume today that's not DIY, there are many wireless options some with rotary encoders, and I think one brand that has a slider, but to have all of those features in one unit, I think this is the first. If I'm being honest, the price gave me a bit of sticker shock initially, considering you get a full-size keyboard for that same amount, but when I started looking at the competitors and what they're charging, it's actually not that far off. The options that closely matches and features are the Aluminum GK21, the Keychron Q0, and the Keypork Nano. If I take shipping costs to my location in California into consideration, sorry the international users, you'll have to do your own breakdown, these are my options. The GK21 Aluminum Barebone comes in at around $100 if bought directly from KP Republic with free shipping. It features Bluetooth but doesn't have a rotary encoder or slider, and the software on anything GK is just absolutely terrible. The Keychron Q0 comes in at around $90 for the Barebone Kit or $100 for a fully built one shipped, but isn't wireless, doesn't have a slider or rotary encoder, but does have full QMK and via support. The Keyboard Nano comes in at around $119 shipped, but isn't wireless and doesn't have an encoder, but does have QMK and MIDI support. Glorious, on the other hand, has free shipping for purchases over $99.99, so you don't have to worry about that, but does have some of its own pros and cons that we're gonna talk about in this review that will dictate if it will be worth the extra 10, 20, or $30 plus over other options. For the price, you'll get the Glorious Numpad set of foam to modify the gasket feel to your liking and a braided USB-C cable. The design language is somewhere in between GMMK2 and the GMMK Pro. It shares that signature light bar seen on both keyboards, but this is where things start to deviate. The full aluminum body thickness and angle, even the anodized coating, matches the GMMK Pro, but the corner radius matches the GMMK2. So my guess here is that moving forward, the GMMK Pro 2 will build on top of the GMMK2 design aesthetic. However, I found the design neutral enough that even when used outside of Glorious' ecosystem, it still fits pretty well. You probably noticed by now, but what's new with this design language is inclusion of a badge, in this case, the Glorious logo. I think fans of the brand will really like the mirror finish they landed on as it adds a really nice contrast difference to the anode frame. On the flip side, I saw a lot of comments saying that they hated the included logo, so for those people, they will be happy to hear that this can be swapped out but the badge is held on with two screws, so you will have to take the case apart. I don't know if there's patents involved in this or not, but the magnetic implementation seen on other keyboards like the Iki 68 Aurora is much more convenient. I don't see myself moving this dump pad around so much, so what I've opted to do is leave the badge in without the screws so I can easily pop it out without the hassle of taking everything apart. I'm also really surprised that an LED wasn't placed behind this for that extra pop. Building in a badge has become a really popular trend the last year or so as it gives people another way to customize their boards. So it makes sense that Glorious would want to capitalize on this with the eventual goal to probably have a base set of badges available in stock with more limited versions sold through Forge. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw something similar added to the GMMK2 Pro as well whenever that gets released. At the top, we have a USB-C port if you want to keep things wired with a channel that can accommodate really bulky USB-C cables, but Bluetooth 5.0 LE is also supported for a wireless experience. I've been using this pad to edit portions of this video you're watching, and I haven't had issues with drop-offs or disconnects. And as far as I can tell, there's only one Bluetooth profile, so you won't be able to hop between devices like Windows and Mac. 
included with the Glorious Numpad are Glorious Fox linear switches in a north facing configuration with the option for south facing plates replacements coming out later. If you were hoping to bring your own switches, you can because the PCB is hot swappable, but you won't get any of the savings in terms of cost because there are currently no plans to sell this as a bare bone kit. The switches come pre looped from the factory, but I guess Glorious is anticipating some consistency issues since Glorious does include this warning card. The GOAT V2 stabs are lubed, so you're good to go out of the box. You can use other third-party screw-in stabs, but no guarantee they'll fit, just like with the GMMK Pro and two keyboards. As the card had warned, I did run into some issues with my stabs being inconsistent. One was unfortunately much more heavily lubed than the other, but the rest of the keys were fine. To the right of the switches, you'll find the rotary encoder and slider. The encoder feels identical to the one found on the GMMK Pro, and it's keyed exactly the same, so if you have extra knobs from a Pro build, you can use it here as well. The encoder is clickable, and by default, it's tied to the calculator shortcut, but can be fully customized through Core. What's new with the encoder this time around is that in the Core software, you can set keys as a toggle to adjust specific audio sources. For example, if the rotary is set to configure and manage the main system volume, I can trigger a key to focus volume control on just a single app like Spotify, for example. So in practice, you can configure a whole layer just to control volumes for each app that you have running like a pseudo mixer. The slider is an interesting addition. It's smooth and it has just the right amount of resistance to make it really satisfying to use, but the good experience is somewhat negated by the slider cap. I'm not sure if it's because this is a sample unit, but the knob is really easy to remove, and even when fully mounted, it's still wobbly enough that it kind of takes away from the experience. Adding a bit of tape to the top here though helps a lot to stabilize it. So what can you do with the slider right now? Well, not much to be honest. In the core software, you have two options. You can either completely disable it, or you can set it to control a volume source. This source can be the main system volume control, or it can be mapped to individual applications, with the only drawback being that there's no visual indication of what the volume level is. But it has been really nice being able to quickly adjust Spotify as I go in and out of meetings or if I'm stuck in a full screen game. It's also been more useful than expected when bound to Premiere, especially when I'm going through audio tuning stage of an edit. For any of this to work though, it requires the core software to be constantly running in the background, which is kind of a big ask with such a limited feature set. I think functionality added to control hot mic levels for streamers or the ability to expose the slider as a mini device would be a really great start. Going into the numpad, we have a three-piece gasket mount design, which seems to draw a lot of inspiration from the GMMK Pro, which means that it has a lot of the same issues. The foam used here as the gasket are incredibly soft, so when you tighten down the case, there's pretty much no give in the plate as you push it. The best way to get around this is to double up on the foam and have a light touch when securing the screws. For whatever reason, mine were missing the foam pads at the top of the bottom base, but they were there on the top frame. Not sure if this is intentional or not, but you should check yours once you receive yours. At the base, we see a 1200 milliamp hour 053759 battery, which is a good thing as these batteries are commonly available pretty much everywhere. The officially rated runtime with LEDs off with Bluetooth on is about 76 hours, but I do want to note that while you're in Bluetooth mode, the numpad currently does not go to sleep automatically, and you'll need to put it to sleep yourself manually by holding down the rotary button. If you opt to use Bluetooth and keep LEDs on, you'll easily run through the battery in a work day or two. So having to charge this thing every few days is kind of annoying. So what I've done is bought one of these USB-C wireless charging pads and taped it to the bottom. So whenever I step away, I just drop it on my wireless charger. The fit is a little crazy, it's super tight, and I don't really recommend anyone doing this, but I'm actually pretty pleased that it's working out. In the middle, we see the main PCB assembly. There's foam to fill out the base and foam in between the aluminum plate and PCB. The included plate is north facing, but a south facing version will be available at a later date, along with the brass and polycarb plate as an option as well. But these aren't the only accessories that will be made available. Colored top frames and slide knobs like this blue one and a new badge like this blank brass option, which I think looks really good, are in the pipeline as well. I think that pretty much covers all of the hardware, so let's move into the software. This is where things get really interesting because the experience can be really good if you work within the confines of the core layering software that can start feeling really restrictive when you start asking too much of it. 
So if you've used the GMMK Pro or the GMMK2, you'll be aware that there's no way to temporarily trigger a layer. You can only cycle through them, which can be really annoying if you want to move fast. If you wanted that functionality, you had to go with QMK, which was fine on those products. But on the numpad, if you offer QMK, you will completely lose the wireless functionality. So you're forced to pick between deep customization or to retain Bluetooth. If you decide to stay with Core to keep the wireless functionality, you'll find some quirks here as well. For example, the 7 key here. With NumLock on, when you press it, you get a 7. With NumLock off, you get home. However, if you remap this key inside of Core for say the letter S, all you get is the letter S regardless of the NumLock state. So with this in mind, what I've done is kept the first layer as default, then customize layer two for Premiere, which I have set for purple, and three for Photoshop set for blue. To access each of the layers quickly, all you need to do is double tap the rotary, and with each layer having its own distinctive color, you'll know exactly where you are. Aside from the new audio mapping, you do have the option to set a numlock indicator, which flashes when the numlock is activated, set the sidebar to always light and show the battery status, and ability to separate lighting settings from when you're in wired and wireless mode. Using the numpad daily has kind of made me realize that the core software needs to be overhauled at this point to support tighter integration between products. Glorious has done a really good job of building out a portfolio of products and Core does a decent job handling the devices individually, but as the ecosystem grows, Core needs to be able to step up to the orchestration role, allowing profile switching across all connected devices. Imagine having a work profile with a set of key bindings and macros for your keyboard and numpad with say a higher mouse CPI to move around documents and spreadsheets quicker, but also having a gaming profile with another set of bindings and maybe a lower DPI that you you can switch with one click. I'm sure it's a lower priority as considering features for new products like this numpad still need to be implemented, but I still think it's something that needs to be brought up. Okay, so at this point, I think this video is pretty long already, so let's wrap it up. If you're a fan of Glorious, you've used their other products and you're fine with the core software, I think you'll like this because you'll be able to get the most out of it. There's no other product out there that comes with an aluminum frame, has both a rotary encoder and slider, and supports being wired and wireless. But because of the usefulness of the slider is limited to just volume control at the moment, buy this for the features it has now, not for features you're hoping they'll integrate or ones that they're promising they will include in the future. But really, this is not limited to Glorious. This is something that you should do for all electronics. For users that must have QMK, the decision here is a bit harder because you do lose that Bluetooth functionality. So you have the way of having the rotor encoder and slider is worth the premium in price over other options in the market. I see this as a mainstream product first, targeting creators like streamers, 2 and 3D artists, or video and photo editors that want a tool to increase their productivity that's also easy to set up. For what I do, it works quite well, and I think it's reasonably priced, but I do think Glorious should sell a stripped down version of this without caps, switches, badges, and maybe even plate when more in-stock options become available after the initial launch. Well, that's it for today. Like and subscribe. It really helps me out and I will see you guys next time. Bye.